BYU schedule is officially out, and I think it's a pretty advantageous schedule overall uh, for BYU. And let me explain why I believe that. Because the biggest thing I talked about, and I did this a couple weeks back, for those of you who are every day as remember, I did a, a an exercise last week on what I thought the ideal schedule for BYU was going to be. Now, uh, was I right in, in many of the circumstances? Actually, I was not. But the bigger point uh, to be made here is that I think BYU got a very good layout of how the schedule is going to pan out for the Cougars here. So let's let's break it down. Obviously, we knew about the first three games. Home to Southern Illinois at SMU at Wyoming. Playing back-to-back out-of-conference uh, games, and obviously one of them being a G5 game at Wyoming, not ideal. I, I hope this is one of the last times, if not the last time, that BYU ever plays two of their non-conference games on the road, unless in the circumstance of potentially you're playing two other Power 5 teams where you play one on the road and you maybe have the FCS game as the other home game. I will give that exception, but you do not, going forward, if I'm advising Tom Homo, ever, I mean, ever play a road game out of conference against uh, Wyoming. And it's nothing against the Cowboys. You're a big boy now, speaking of BYU. Stop doing that stuff. But nonetheless, I think it's good that BYU's playing that game at SMU on a Friday night. Gives them an extra day of a recovery, making the travel back to Provo, and then making that relatively shorter trip over to Laramie to play the Cowboys. Then Big 12 play opens up with two very interesting games. The biggest, One of the biggest home games of the season is the second home game of the season for BYU in the first Big 12 home game, and that is the Kansas State. State Wildcats coming to Provo, Utah. Now, uh, Chris Kleiman and his squad, they are going to be very, very tough to beat. But this is a good time of the year to get them, I think, because BYU will still have relatively little film on them. And they'll have plenty of film, hopefully, on Kansas State uh, from last season, obviously this year that they'll be able to evaluate and hopefully have a more cohesive game plan and hopefully uh, strike an upset with that one. I, I think it'd be a very, very nice uh, kickoff to Big 12 play to get an upset. And I, I would consider it an upset over Kansas State at this juncture. Now, crazy things can happen and BYU could end up in somehow, some way being the favorite, uh, according to the odds makers that week. But as it stands right now, I think that's a very, very solid uh, debut in the Big 12. Similar last year, remember, BYU opened up Big 12 play there in Lawrence. I was there as BYU played against Kansas. Well, they're, get, they're back home this year uh, playing another Kansas school. It's the arch rival of Kansas and Kansas State. Then you finish up the month of September on the road at Baylor. Baylor is a rebuilding program. They fired Jeff Grimes. They revamped their entire offensive coaching staff. And Dave Aranda is under a ton of pressure here. And they, BYU has to go to Baylor. This is uh, similar to what I just talked about with Kansas State. It's a good time to get Baylor because they may not have ultimately figured things out completely at that point. Uh, but I still think you can go down to Waco and hopefully pick up a win. And then you finally get your first bye week. You play five games, two of them a very interesting Big 12 games. Obviously, you're a non-conference slate. Then you get your first bye over general conference weekend. I talked about when I did my exercise projecting uh, for BYU, I would have liked to have seen BYU maybe travel uh, that weekend for general conference and play UCF on a Friday night. Well, the conference decided to reward them, I guess, in a way and give BYU that general conference weekend off. Now, those of you who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will be able to enjoy general conference and all of its glory, and I have to uh, obviously work around the BYU schedule. You can just do that. And then they're right back at home the following week, and they get to gear up for a very, very interesting home game against Arizona. How does Arizona look under Brent Brennan? They do have their quarterback back in Noah Fafita. They have their star wide receiver in Teteroa uh, McMillan also returning. A number of guys decided to spurn going with Jed Fish to Washington and stayed put in Tucson. Arizona is going to be a very, very good team, I think, but ultimately new coaching uh, regimes can change things. And we'll see how that ultimately affects BYU in that game. But I think coming off a bye week and a home game against Arizona, that's a very good spot to get the Wildcats. Then the following week, it's the first option game, as I'm calling it, for a BYU. They could play either Friday or Saturday against Oklahoma State. Back-to-back -back home games as the Oklahoma State Cowboys come to town. These two games against Arizona, Oklahoma State will be the biggest test back-to-back -back, it feels like for BYU simply due to the fact of the caliber and the talent that both of these teams possess. All of us will remember that Oklahoma State got BYU in that double overtime game. BYU will want nothing more than to get payback on them, but also it's an Oklahoma State team that made the run to the Big 12 title game this past year. So that's a very, very stout game and I'm actually kind of fingers crossed that game ends up on a, a Friday night because then you have extra time to prepare for a road trip to UCF. Now, UCF is an interesting team because I thought they were pretty good this, this past year, but they had a lot of failings uh, when it felt like they should have been better than they were. 
Uh, they have a new quarterback will be under center. That's the former Arkansas quarterback, uh, KJ uh, uh, Jefferson, who obviously BYU is intimately familiar with from the past two games they have played against Arkansas the past two years. But you make that trip to UCF, and then you get your second bye week. This is a great bye week because you make your longest trip of the season, come home, rest up, have an extra week off, and then obviously all the attention for two weeks builds up to the annual rivalry game against Utah. And my feelings aside, that's how the schedule is going to play out. And obviously we will have a field day in sports radio talking about it and building it up for two weeks. But then you finish up the home stretch for BYU includes a home game the following week after Utah, which is a big opportunity for Kansas coming into Provo uh, to get BYU because there's obviously that big potential for a letdown after that game at Utah. Win, loss, doesn't matter what happens. There's a potential for a letdown, and Kansas is licking their chops. With Jeff Grimes is their offensive coordinator coming back to Provo and thinking, hey, that's a great spot for us to go into Provo and potentially uh, catch BYU napping. Then BYU finishes it up on the road, the final road game of the season at Arizona State. Uh, it's a great time to go to Arizona, obviously, down into Tempe right around uh, late November before Thanksgiving. Weather should be relatively mild down south. It can be absolutely crazy up here along the Wasatch Front, so it's a great time to go to Arizona State. And then you finish it up at home Thanksgiving weekend with the Cougars versus the Cougars, the Houston Cougars and their first year under Willie Fritz. What will they look like by the time they show up in Provo? It's anybody's guess, but similar to uh, similar to what we know about BYU, we don't know what the Cougars are going to look like at that point. So uh, could this be a game that potentially both of these teams are coming into this game five and six looking for bowl eligibility and whoever wins it goes to the postseason, the other stays home. That could have some interesting stakes on it, even though it doesn't have the same luster of potentially a game like Utah would have had to end the season for BYU. So that's how things lay out. And I honestly, I think the, the bye weeks are very well placed. I, like I said, in my exercise, I had the first bye week after what would have been Kansas State. So the week you would go to Baylor, I had the bye week there, but it got slotted back a week. And I can understand why the conference did that with general conference and the like. Uh, but I think the way the buys lay out here, it gives BYU an opportunity after a very tough opening stretch five game run uh, to rest up a little bit, play two very good opponents, actually three very good opponents in Arizona, Oklahoma, and UCF. Another really, really tough October for BYU, but it's sandwiched around two bye weeks to hopefully have BYU as fresh as possible going into the final uh, month of the season when you will face, like I said, Utah, Kansas, Arizona State, and Houston. So I, I can I can respect how the conference ultimately laid it out for BYU. I think it's a great layout in terms of stratifying where the uh, conference games uh, come and the tough ones versus maybe one of the easier ones. I, really, the only bad stretch is that back-to-back -back against Arizona and Oklahoma State. But the nice part is, like I said, both of those games are at home. So that helps you out in that circumstance. So the, the way it lays out here for BYU means that BYU will have a fighting chance. I think at pushing for a six and six record at minimum, and that's got to be the goal for BYU. That's absolutely got to be the goal for them is to get to a, a, a postseason berth in the bowl season, because I, I just don't know that the, the, that you as Cougar fans, uh, me, us in the media will be content with BYU potentially spinning their wheels for another year and going five and seven. And now could that ultimately play out? Yes, it could, because this is a very, very tough schedule on paper. You're talking about some of the upper echelon of, of the Big 12. I would venture to say that Kansas, Arizona, Oklahoma State, Utah, and uh, excuse me, Kansas State, Arizona, Oklahoma State, Utah, and Kansas, those five teams, five of BYU's opponent, about half the schedule, those are top half of the conference. If not, I, each one of them has an argument to potentially be the Big 12 favorite in the preseason or a dark horse contender to win the Big 12 crown. That's not going to make life easy on BYU, and they're going to have to battle through this. But I think the, the thing that BYU can take comfort in and some, I don't know how, how to describe it, maybe some, uh, some, uh, confidence, I guess, away from this is the fact that they battled, they battled their tails off the tail end of the season against both Oklahoma and Oklahoma state and came, it felt like moments away from wins in either one of those games. If BYU can channel that same type of intensity and play those games with that same type of fervor, that same type of hunger, uh, use whatever adjective you want. That's going to give BYU the opportunity to pull off any win on this schedule. I'm not looking at any one of these games and looking at it and saying, yep, that's a loss for BYU. 
Now, like I said, circumstances may change and as uh, rosters change with the transfer portal, maybe a team gets a major pickup in the spring window that none of us are expecting at this point. Maybe, heck, B, maybe even BYU gets a major pickup in the spring portal window that changes the, the mindset. But I look at the schedule for BYU and I, I don't say immediately that any game is imminently losable or I, it's a guaranteed loss for BYU, but there are a number of them on the schedule as well that I look at and say outside of Southern Illinois, uh, do I really count any of them as a surefire win. I sure don't because I, Wyoming is a very, very pesky team. And especially when you have to go up to Laramie, who knows what that's going to hold for you. SMU is going to be all geeked out because they're a new member of the ACC. Their fan base is going to be absolutely raucous. Now their fan base consists of about 12 people, I feel like, but Nonetheless, it, it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, layout for BYU. And we'll probably do another exercise here soon after I do a little more research on these teams and dig into them. And I'll give you kind of my expectation, my, my prediction for BYU, my, my way too early prediction for BYU's 2024 uh, record. Remember last year, any of you who've been listening to this podcast, this time last year, I told you guys the goal for me was six and six. And I stuck to that all off season long and felt like, okay, Debut in the Big 12, get to six and six. Now, uh, when BYU started the season five and two, it was like, okay, what can they ultimately accomplish? Well, then ultimately they lost five straight to end up five and seven. So it is going to be an interesting ride for BYU. But the nice part is they are a member of the Power Four. They're a member of a conference that has got a lot to prove about itself. And BYU will be able to strive to prove themselves right alongside a number of these other programs. And that's the fun, I guess, idealistic part of what the Big 12 could hold for BYU in 2024.